Uh, okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Vishal. I am a master's student at um, Sutria Labs at Monash University. Um, would you guys like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Chuying, and I'm a PhD student from the same lab. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm also a PhD student from the same lab. Uh, I'm Li Pong. I'm a research assistant of the same lab. Great. Uh, so today we'll be looking at a pretty interesting but pretty th technical paper. Um, it's a minuscule periodicity of neural firing in the human entorhinal cortex. Um, by Agarjan and colleagues. Uh, so to quickly summarize, the paper essentially looks at the temporal coding of experience, right? Um, the study basically investigates the neural firing of uh, uh neural firing patterns of uh fourteen neurosurgical patients while they watched a continuous video over time. Right? I think I think the video is about. Or well, forty five minutes, forty two minutes around there, um. So they had they had a specific focus of neurons in entorhinal cortex, a brain region associated with spatial navigation, um. So the study aims to investigate whether period periodicity in neural firing exists for behaviorally relevant time scales in the human brain, uh, particularly in the entorhinal cortex, uh. The study explores how certain cells modulate their activity in a periodic manner across different time scales from seconds to minutes uh, during a continuous experience. Um, so we know grid cells provide a map of our environment, generally speaking, right? Um, and here they try to identify if there is an if there are neurons encoding for longer temporal sequences, uh, which of course is very relevant to human experience and behavior, right? Time is a very fundamental concept. Um, so diving into the methods, um, the participants were epileptic seizure, uh, seizure patients with intracranial death uh, electrodes. Uh, they were made to watch uh, the, episode, uh, the episodes of a 24 TV series. Um, and afterwards, they were tested for um, recognition. They, they were tested with a recognition task where they were shown short clips and asked whether they had previously seen them. Um, also, uh, one of the methods that they used is they showed the videos, um, showed the participants these videos with different playback speeds, right? Now, that's important to remember. So um, some of these neurons uh, showed really striking periodicity in their firing over the course of the videos that they were watching and the time scale of this period periodicity through their analysis, which I'm not gonna dive into the details, uh, varied from uh, unit to unit, ranging from seconds to minutes. So um, there were about three results that I wanna highlight or that the paper highlights. Um, first of all, yes, periodicity is observed over the course of watching um, the video. Um, Actually, before I dive into the results, I also want to say that these neurons were labeled TPCs, right? Which is temporally periodic cells, right? Yes. So um, these neurons were located in about 11 areas with the main area, I mean, the main focus of this paper being the entorhinal cortex. Um, the second result that I want to highlight is that when the participants engaged in the recognition task, right, the neurons could remap their periodicity, right, which showed adaptability, right, we'll talk about that later as well, and uh, when changing the speed of the video, right, or cutting bits of the videos to change the flow, uh, most of these neurons maintained this consistent periodicity, um, about, of course, it shows the degree of consistency with regard to the narrative experience. So, um, diving into the discussion, uh, what do these findings mean? First off, these neurons had a relatively consistent periodicity, right? Um, despite the the change and the difference in their sensory input, their their experience, right? So this makes it possible to extract temporal information, right? Which even the researchers highlighted, which the brain may or may not use in the cognitive processes. That's a question that's not discussed in this paper. Um, the remapping of uh, periodicity during the recognition task could be related to the encoding of memory, uh, memory performance, the change in structure of the task and context, but it shows that these cells, these TPCs are adaptable, right? 
Um, and uh, I think that basically highlights that there are, in fact, neurons that encode the te our temporal experience. And this technically complements the spatial periodicity of grid cells and therefore plays a, um, I'd say, integral role in basically bringing together our human experience in terms of space and time. So yes, um, and before I finish the summary, I just want to quickly highlight that um, a limitation highlighted by the researchers is the fact that the participants here are epilepsy patients. So there could be some difference in um, a healthy sample, but we don't know. Um, and also TPCs may be related to other cognitive processes such as chunking, which is also memory related. Um, but yeah, that's also a question for another study. study. So yes, that's essentially a brief overview of this paper. So you guys wanna open up the discussion? I, I suppose a uh, good question to, uh, well, a question to ask is whether uh, the previous researchers who discovered the grid, um, the spatial cells, were they doing something similar uh, roughly or are they doing something drastically different? Do you know uh, anything about that, Michelle? No, I do not. Um, but this is... I, I do know that the discovery of grid cells, if I remember correctly, or perihippocampal place uh, area cells, I think those were in a sample of rodents. And I think they highlighted that in this paper as well, right? They use rats, right? Animal animal mm -hmm. testing. Um, but here, um, they had the opportunity to uh, record this data from intracranial uh, electrodes, right? From seizure, uh, epileptic seizure, seizure patients. So it's a... Uh, yeah. Um, I ask this largely because uh, I I feel like the relationship that they are trying to draw between the grid cells and what they currently found is a bit tenuous. Mm -hmm. They the argument is actually saying that oh they are located in roughly the same spot in the brain, so therefore there may be some some relationship. Um, mm. I'm not very confident about that, but I it's it's a it's not a bad uh, reason, I suppose. No, but uh, I feel like the argument that they're making here is the fact that these cells not don't really like have they they don't argue they have relationship because they're in the same area. It's more that you have spatial encoding, and now you have TPCs that they highlighted here, which is temporal encoding. So that's the underlying a potential neural correlate for our experience of time to net more naturalistic experiences i guess but can i ask for a clarification of the uh, temporal experience because in the result it seems that they this tp say seems not to relate to the temporal experience because they uh, for example, they played the uh, video in different speed and then they found a no correlation between that, but they mm -hmm. found that the cognitive task uh, in the cognitive test, the mapping is shift different. So yeah. yeah, so I think their point is that this TPC is not related to the to the temporal experience, but correlated with the uh, for example, functional aspect of the conscious or functional aspect of the mind, which is mm -hmm. memory. And then, so yes, this is my curiosity when I look at this this paper, and I also um uh, looking uh go to Google Scholar to find some paper about a uh, temporal or yeah temporal experience, and then I found this cortex, uh sorry in 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 tor no cortex uh, sorry, androgynous cortex. Yeah, this cortex yeah. has been mentioned many, many times in the uh, yeah. study of yeah, temporal experience, but yeah. Yeah. not in this, yeah. yeah. So uh, how, how do you look at this question? Uh, um, From my understanding of reading the paper, uh, yeah, I think maybe I phrased it in uh, incorrectly. It's not really temporal experience. It's basically a temporal, ex the temporal sequence of ex experience, if that, if that makes sense. So... Um, although they changed the playback speed, right? The mm. 
the periodicity remains largely unchanged for these TPCs. Yeah, yeah. So that means you can accurately extract or it accurately encodes temporal information, right? Like from real like from real experiences. But when in terms of a uh, recognition task which, which involves memory, right? It probably adapts, right? It shows adaptability by remapping the periodicity to match the task at hand, the context at hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think they, they did mention that mo most of the TPC have remapped even during the faster playback, right? Yeah. No, but most don't. Most of them. I was under the impression mm -hmm. that they mentioned the significant fraction. Yeah, they mentioned the, they the mentioned majority. The, the majority is remapped, right? Yes. Really? Um, can I, uh, this is this open access. Yes, yes. Can I show my screen? I sure. are we allowed to? I don't. Uh, yeah, it's just open access should be fine. Yeah. Open access. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can we see? So this is the one I'm referring. Oh, I might have missed that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I might so have said this out under which uh section? Um, it's under the TPC's periodicity showed invariance with respect yeah. to narrative. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. No worries. So, so I feel like for both memory tests and the actual faster playback speed, most mm. cell remapped to a shorter period uh, periodicity. Yeah. Uh, but some don't, and I think that's actually perhaps more interesting comparing to if all the cell remap, because it mm. seems to suggest there are some kind of constant clock inside your body or well, inside your brain that's yeah. counting time, and you are comparing the narrative content with your this temporal clock in the sense. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh I have a question actually quite related to Mike's question before. So um if I remember correctly from now, he mentioned this that I think it's called DAPS electrode te uh, technique. And yeah. it has been used for a long time. And actually, mm -hmm. I remember now mentioned that the researchers couldn't make sure where the electrode was put or say which neuron and mm -hmm. they, they are measuring. So they can what they can do is to put this electrode into the patient's brain and yep. hope that they can get some valid data. And mm. so um, if the grid cell and this TPCs are roughly at the same location, or maybe they are intermixed a, mm. a little bit. So actually, I'm wondering, is this possible to say the periodic key um, is actually detected from the grid cells? I wonder if there is a, such a possibility. Yeah. Mm. And I'm not familiar with the accurate location of grid cells and such TPCs, the author is saying. So yeah, they're roughly at the same location, right? Let's see. Have um, you noticed any information somewhere? Uh, I think I, I know that grid cells are predominantly in the medial anterohinal cortex, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yes, uh, and um, also the singular cortex, right? Really. I don't know. I know it's medial anterohinal cortex. Okay. The medial area of it. Um from memory. I don't know about the anterior singular. But so according to this paper, um these neurons were in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, anterohinal cortex, and they don't specify where in the EC specifically, and the anterior cingulate as well. And of course, the parahippocampal gyrus. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know enough to answer Chuin's question, actually. 
but yeah, so it only it exists. It, it, it yeah. only mentioned interrenal cortex and yeah. some from cingulate region, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's overlapped. It, it's overlapped with the grid cells, right? I, I can't remember where the grid cells are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they specifically said in the discussion it's the inferior cortex and the anterior cingulate are the two areas yeah. they found grid cells. Mm. Mm. So yeah, it does overlap. Well, at least partially, at the very least. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's what my gut feel. That's my gut feeling from reading that part of discussion. That that they they don't they are not sure what kind of cells they got information from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but maybe the technique is different from twenty years ago by now's yeah. colleagues. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just tried like having a a rough search. Um, of this and there's no unlike grid cells and like place cells and all that like you there's no um formal name for tpcs tpcs is yeah yeah right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. termed by the paper so uh yeah there's uh, no there's no clear direction i guess yeah okay can can i say my understanding yeah. but i'm not sure whether it's correct for example the grid cell they mentioned is a two dimension which is first uh temporal dimension second uh is um space right. space dimension but the tpc is only for uh temporal dimension so which right. so my understanding is that uh, tpc include grid cell is that correct i don't know because if uh, in terms of function or in terms of this dimension, I feel I feel like that. Um, maybe there's some overlap. So it's like Wing's paradigm. There is some overlap, but really, TPC um, um, is in. No, sorry. I mean grid cells belong to TPCs. Is this? A, Valid definition. I'm not sure. Yeah, it sounds I, yeah, I'm weird. Sure. It sounds weird. It sounds weird. I I don't know if grid cells encode temporal information. I don't think they do. Right? You said they're two dimensions, but I don't. I don't. I I don't know as well. So, to my knowledge, I don't think grid cells. Uh, because temporal those, information just spatial. Yeah, please correct me if I I'm wrong. So I remember mm -hmm. these cells are. So, uh, were discovered based on their functions. So grid cells were discovered because yeah, people found such a group of cells which can show um spatial information. Yeah. And then the, those cells were named as grid cells. It's not they are not found by say people cutting the brain of uh, of rats and say mm -hmm. that type of cells are called grid cells. It's not like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. in my understanding, uh, um, there can be overlap. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay. also to my knowledge, I don't think grid cells encode temporal information, which is why this paper um, highlights that there are these TPCs. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's a bit of ambiguity if uh, these... TPCs actually yeah. overlap with grid cells, yeah. Yeah, or maybe bi biologists had have some um discoveries, but we didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. maybe I'm not correct because uh, I misunderstand the two, this two dimension, the meaning of two dimension. It, it it in this paper they said that it is two dimension spatial environment. So maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, yes, that's, yeah, grid cell, yes. Two dimensional grid. Mm. Essentially, if TPCs are independent from grid cells, then we now know, or mm. like we can, I guess, uh, we can say that our experience our daily experience and our um, behaviors and everything are basically 
resulting from these two mechanisms integrating, right? Grid cells, um, or any any for any like uh, spatial layout maps that we have in our brain, plus these TPCs, which don't have a formal name yet. So, <laughs> yeah. And um, is this a newly discovered cell? I mean, um, any, it's published um, in twenty twenty three. No, I mean before this paper, any um, any uh, earlier paper, old paper that uh, so, I already mentioned it. Yeah, not according to the introduction of this paper. Not not they hmm. there, there have not been any investigations for yeah. um the new representations of temporal sequences. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I think especially in human, there has been a lacking of literature around this. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, okay, they found okay. something in in rats, I think. Uh, it's in the hippocampus, uh, some sort of time cells before, mm. but uh, not in human. Yeah. Oh. Time cells, yeah. Yeah. Um. This may be a uh, a question that's either stupid or bad, but I'm going to ask <laughs> it. Um, are we convinced by this periodic uh, periodicity as a representation of time on like individual neuron? Um, I think we can probably take it with a pinch of salt because of, uh, I think Chewy made a very good point about the ambiguity of whether or not grid cells are involved in these TPCs. Like, you know, they, they, um, I, maybe there is an, maybe there is some information that I've missed regarding how localized um, the region of the endorhinal cortex they refer to. Um, but I do know they have data, uh, time series data from a few other regions as well, like the ventromedial PFC, the anterior cingulate, parahippocampal gyrus, and so on. Um, but in terms of being convinced, they also highlighted like three limitations, right, that we should uh, account for. Um, yeah. Um, I think what I was trying to refer to is uh, perhaps a little on the bigger picture side of, of things. Um, uh, my question would be, why does periodicity matters? Um, from a computational level, I can see that, okay, right, because the, you have this oscillation of firing rate that adapts, that remaps, you can encode time information in it. Mm. I agree with right. that. Do, do you mean a potential possibility to decode time information from this uh, firing rate or features, well, right? Um, uh, from... Uh, um, from I guess I suppose from brain's perspective, it would be encoding rather than decoding, right? But okay. also from from yeah. researcher perspective, we are decoding. We are trying to figure it out. Yeah, but yeah, from yeah, the yeah. Brain, we are taking in information and encoding the inside. Uh, yeah, but yeah, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. also in the paper, um, because these TPCs have a relatively consistent periodicity, they said that it should be possible to decode time information. So yeah, but. They they yeah, use a classification. So. Yeah, they they're yeah. using a classification task, and it's yeah. a little bit too dodgy for my taste. Well, you know, uh, uh, not the most convincing case. Mm. Um, what what I was mm. trying to say is that surely there are several ways to encode time information in neurons. And mm. true, they 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 mentioned that there could be other factors involved. This is only one. But I'm just not sure why would periodicity match uh, in comparison in comparison to all the other. Things. So why is it why why is it special? Mm. Uh, what do you mean by per periodicity matches match? Um. Uh, why why does it why is it why is it important? Ah. Uh. It's. Uh, um, in terms of decoding, yeah, I still need to say, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm more used to say decoding, but it's the same thing as encoding from Mike, sorry. Um, in terms of decoding, it's about a pattern of firing. So I'm guessing a, the um, um, firing feature, uh, sorry, how to say that, periodicity? 
and the uh, periodicity of a single neuron and mm. doesn't mean much of um about time information but if we have a pattern of multiple cells it might mean something that's what i yeah. guess in terms of so decoding yeah yeah so from my understanding i uh from my understanding i think i think in a similar i think uh, similar to Chuyin, um you have the periodicity um of one cell represents um like a like one part of a overall pattern and that relates to the structure of ex time experience or in the case of grid cells spatial experience right mm -hmm. so kind of like how engrams work for memories right a specific pattern of activation um is theorized to be associated with a specific memory right same thing here i'd say um but yeah Mm. But say we don't have a doubt that these TPCs actually do encode temporal information of our daily experiences and everything. So this is essentially highlighting a neural correlate of uh, time experience, mm. right? Yes, yes. Uh, Mike essence, is correct. The yeah. evidence is still not enough to fully yeah. convince people. So this is tem um, temporal information. Yeah. We need probably need more, say, detailed or say, mm. um, yeah, more specific. Yeah. We, yeah. we may need an actual experiment that to manipulate, uh, like in, inducing certain lesion in rats and see whether they they have bad temporal perception or uh, find, find something similar in natural human patients. That mm -hmm. would be the actual interesting mm -hmm. uh, part or for everything. Simply try to decode it. Yeah. yeah. Try some. Mm, but yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm mm. not sure if there are existing toolboxes, but yeah, it's a potential way to go. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So when we're talking about the temporal experience, we are talking about the what is feel like. What does it feel like when time passing? Right. It it it, it is phenomenal quality. Right. Really. I mean. I mean, or, this paper doesn't touch about the 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 yes, phenomenon. Yes, this paper. Of the the yeah, paper is not all. about. Yeah. yeah, the paper is not about the phenomenon. Yeah, it's yes, more of just about the encoding. About this. Yeah, it's just it's just directly the encoding of time experience. I guess time temporal well, sequences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how the information is stored in our Over brain. Over time, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. The yes, the the, the this... temporal sequence of an of a given experience, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So this paper. Yeah, because I, I'm a little bit confused when this paper doesn't touch about this concept and you are talking about um <laughs> time temporal experience is a little bit confused to me. I yeah. I feel like Lipen is more right than than uh, than I would willing to admit because <laughs> how do we perceive time? How do we make a time judgment? Mm. Well, we have certain mm. experience, right? We have a yeah. hope presumably some kind of quota experience, or maybe quota experience, or we make some cognitive judgment about other factors and we somehow came up with how, many, how long time has passed, right? right. So if, if we take the first pass and say, hey, there is something quota, there's actual quota experience about that, then Lipen would be absolutely right, right? In, mm. in that sense, this paper, True, it's it's talking about computation, how information is transformed, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it will have to be able to explain our actual cooler experience at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for yeah. Yeah. I also recall this paper. I mean, this is just a thought. I, like uh I don't know how related the thought is, but I also uh, I recall this paper of subjective time experience. Um, and I think the experiment involved a waiting room. And then after seven minutes, the researchers come into the room uh, and uh, and uh, ask, like, uh, what's your experience with them? How long do you, was it, how long do you think it was? You know, so and so. Um, and then, of course, the participant responds with their subjective experience of how long they waited and everything. And so when I read the the paragraph that said, you know, um, these TPCs, right, these temporally periodic cells, um, remapped their periodicity according to the context and the situation. 
I, I can't help but tie the two concepts together, right? Because these cells are so adaptable in, you know, encoding temporal sequences of experiences, not I'm going to stop saying temporal experience. I'm going to say temporal sequence of experience, right? Yeah. The templates, um, I'm like, I was like, hmm, so how related or how involved would these TPCs be in the subjective experience of time um, of when you're having fun versus when you're like really, really bored? You know, um, this, I don't know. This yeah, is th this more of a this is more of a theocrat theory crafting <laughs> uh, uh, question by there. Yeah, I have a thought, but sorry, it's it might last. It might be less relevant to what Michelle just said. It's about mm. Mike's Zeno effect. If you are, yeah, 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 phenomenologically, yeah, yeah. if you are mm. asking how long do you feel has passed, whether or not that will change the temporal mm. experience. Yeah. yeah, but no, no. In in that paper, they didn't ask at intervals. They just asked like once after the entire waiting process. But the, the Zeno effect, you have to. Uh, you 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 would go into the room and ask at multiple points. Yeah, what if and, we do that? I mean, what if we do that? Yeah, I see. You mean what if we do that? Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, actually... in this paper, oh, sorry. oh no, also no, no, no. I was just paper. going. To... All right, Mike, you want to, uh, Deepang, you want to go first? Yeah. <laughs> and also in this paper, they ask a participant right to 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 record a video clip. As a memory right. test, and then they, they found that um the pattern was shifted. So right. just like what Chuin said, I also want to mention about the Zeno effect. I, I mm. want to see whether whether it is a little bit correlated with uh, Mike's project, but maybe I it's mean, not. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean the researchers, the authors highlighted um in the discussion the discussion section that this could be quite related to memory memory performance right the recollection of memory mm. and uh, no. re memory retrieval and so on and so forth which is which is mm. why in the, in the limitations they didn't account for cognitive processes such as chunking so you know you can take it with a grain of salt with a pinch of salt so yeah um but yeah mike you were going to say something um i was just going to say uh, one of the previous intern in our lab had an idea of building a, a time-based uh, uh, the no effect experiment um, mm. that I find interesting. But also in this case, I kind of wonder if you just don't ask participants to report whether there would be, well, I wonder what their instruction is exactly as put it this way. What do they tell them that, hey, we're going to test you upon this later. So you better look carefully and remember all the detail you can. Or they just show them and then ask them like as a surprise in a sense. Um, Maybe there's a sh the shift in periodicity may be a result of that, but then I mean, when yeah. you report, like for example, the recognition task is a report, it's a task where they self-report, right? Whether it's a task or whether someone says, "Hey, do you remember that movie?" and this happened, and you'd be like, "Yeah, isn't that also in itself a task?" Like you are recognizing and recalling a certain part of the movie, so you can do it formally administering it as a task mm. or you can do it informally like in part of a casual conversation with a friend but to to um, get um the response this similar response in activity or the, the change in periodicity of these tpcs for example um you would always have like a report someone would be checking in or else you wouldn't even be doing that <laughs> you wouldn't like recall uh, it right? so yeah um but i, I just wonder whether you, you instead of asking questions you just show them the food and that's that's sort of it. Whether that would make a difference, but I guess um, it's not that interesting of a manipulation. Oh, mm. well. yeah. All right. Any other thoughts, discussions? Mm. I think that's all from me. <laughs> yeah, um, it 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 was a pretty brief uh, article. Right, we're very comprehensive, very detailed, um, straight to the point, direct. So, we kind of touched most of the areas that this was worth discussing. I, I think, right? Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Um. Well, if if that's the case, then that will be the end of this journal club. Then. Well. Yeah. Um. See you guys next time. All right. Thank you. Bye.